Very good. Yes, Kayak. You have. So are we con- are we connected? Yes, we are connected. Uh, Tzvi, the problem is that you only have the Rav's original uh, draft to my McClaimus. A few more were added in the second Madura. I'll try to get it to you. I have the updated. So you do? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So this is... start at 12? No, no, let's let uh, he has to do before he has to go since he's already on. We'll, we'll take over when he leaves. Okay, Shalom Aleichem quite a Rav. So thank you for... Um, uh, when, you, when your Pekuda Rebbeinah sent us a vast amount of Myra McClaimers, including, I don't know if this is a draft or this is the final form of the Tshuva, a Tshuva Klolis on this Suya of uh, Kabbalah and Halacha. And uh, the message that I asked the Rebbe was whether it would be, it doesn't look likely to do this all one in one shear and whether Rebbe would be Nicha to divide into two so we can figure it out slowly. And on the way yes, I said it, you we, agree. We, it would be impossible to do this in one shear. We need at least two. Maybe from my point of view, I would even have three, but that depends on your plans. So the reason we're doing this topic is Lag Boimer is coming up. And Lag Boimer is a day which is very clearly associated with the Rashbi, with the Pshim and Bayakoi. So there are many reasons why Lag Boimer is a day of Simcha. It's interesting. Most of them aren't associated with Reb Shimon. The Shulchan Aruch and Simen Tov Tzad Gimel writes that you could shave and Lag Boimer. Sheoimrim, sheposka hamagefo. So as you see in the background, I'm not really at home right now. I'm actually in the house of our dear friend Moshe Kesselman, who works in Meridian. And I am presently in his house because I'm giving a shear shortly in a shul in Efrat. So why is Lag Oimer a special day? Shachanoch writes, Paskolamus, the plague was over Lag Oimer. And the Me'iri is the very first source in Yavam HaSamech Beis. Nechido, Seifa Moira Be'etzber writes, this is the day in which Rebbe Kiva was Saimech, the five giants, his five later Talmidim, Rabbi Yisenu Shebedorim. But most of the sources say, this is Yoyme de Hilula, the Rashbi, this is the day in which Reb Shimon Be'yechoi Olo B'Saira HaShemayma. And wherever we have about Teres Asayid, about Kabbalah, is based on the Zayar. So on one hand, Reb Shimon was one of the greatest Tanoim. Reb Shimon appears in every other Mishnah in Shas. On the other hand, one could say he's the father of Teres Kabbalah, of the Zayar. So I think it was most appropriate when Reb Shleim asked me, would I speak about the interface between Kabbalah and Halacha? And what is the significance of Kabbalistic sources in Halacha? Let us start off with the Mishnah Bruder, Semachor Feisif Kotun Membeis. The Mishnah Bruder follows in the footsteps of the Mogan Avram, Sif Kotun Chof, who actually quotes the Knesset Hagadayla. So I would like to have the Mishnah Brura on the screen. Chof hei mem beis. In my Maramakoimis, it's the very first one. Oh, here we are, here we are. So the Mishnah Brura writes, five Kalolim, Mekitsa Nimrats, and there seem to be some contradictions between one cloud and the other. So the topic here, and soon we will get to the topic, <coughs> is do we put on Tefillin Shariyad seated or standing? Most of the place can say standing. What's the difference between Shariyad and Shariyad? However, al Kabbalah, some say, Shariyad, you need to put on seated. 
We'll get to this discussion in a few minutes, but let's start off with the fundamental rules. Column number two. Kosova Knesset Zagdoyle Bekloli Apoiski. Kol Dove Shabani Akabola Vazer Cholkema Magamora Vapoiska Malech Achrei Hagamora Vapoiski. Rule number one. Whenever there's a contradiction between Nigla and Nistar, Nigla always has the upper hand. Whether it's Gemora against Zayar or the Poiskim against Balei Kabola, we always adhere to Torah and Nigla to Alocha, overrides Kabola. Rule number two, Mihu. In Balei Kabola Machmirim, Yesh Lahachmir Gam Kain. If our Pia Kabola we should be Machmir, then we should be Machmir. Source number three, Bemloi Huska Begamola Bebepoiskin, something that is not mentioned and dealt with in the Gamora and the Poiskin. Afor Pishiniske Bekabola, Ein Onu Yacholem Lochov Linoi Kain. So if there's no halachic source, only Kabola, you cannot impose Kabola on people. You could recommend. Midas Chasidus cannot impose. Source number four. Medin she'ein muska behepech b'sha'as ha'poiskim yesh leilach achar divrei kabola. If something is found in kabola and it doesn't contradict the halachi principle, yesh leilach achar divrei kabola. Does rule number four contradict rule number three? Rule number three also deals with a situation in which and rule number three says we cannot impose. How does that fit in with rule number four? Rule number five, and if there's disagreement among the poiskim, two different opinions, and there is no hachra, could that be imposed or just a recommendation? There are two ways to reconcile rule number three, four, five. So let me share with you my personal opinion. There are two different types of rulings that we find in Kabbalah. Sometimes we find Hanhogas in Kabbalah, which clearly don't belong to the realm of Halacha. But Arpi Kabbalah, this is the right thing to do. But the Mechabolim had no intention of saying this is halacha. It's not a halacha. It cannot be a halacha. And I want to give two examples. Semen Reish Lamed Ches. It's not on my soul sheet. I did not see it on your soul sheet. If we could fetch it, Matoy. If not, I'll just share with you. What's there? Reish Lamed Ches Be'er Hetev. It's in every Mishnah Brura. If we can have the beginning of Reish Lamed Ches and Mishnah Brura, probably we'll have the Be'er Hetev. So the Be'er Hetev brings from the Ari that by night you don't learn Torah Shabbat Sav. Only Torah Shabbat Peh. Torah Shabbat Sav is Din. Night is Din. You learn Torah Shabbal Peh all day and all night, Torah Shabbat only by day. That was never meant to be a halacha. One of the first Perek of Sefer Yehoshua, the Navi says, Day and night is fitting for kol a Torah kulo. So this was never meant to be a halacha. Here we are. 
Reish Lamed Ches, Sif Cotton Bays, we need to turn one page. Here we are. Ein likroi mikro belaylo. Ve'en lishun. Elo achagim al-shoyz. Ein likroi mikro belaylo. Second line, be'ereitev, also brought in Mishneh Berula. But the early source is the be'ereitev. Five words. Ein likroi mikro belaylo. And the source is the Riyakovish. So this is an example of something that we find in Kabbalah, but it was never mean, meant to be Allah. So this cannot be imposed. Example number two, Mogan Avram. Semachof Aleph, Sif, Cotton Bays. Mogan Avram quotes the Ariya Kodesh. The Ariya Kodesh says, one should sleep with tzitzis. And one should wear tzitzis even by night. Mogan Avram disagrees. The Chazonish did not sleep with tzitzis. Many Chazidim are makbed to wear tzitzis even when they sleep. So the Ariya Kodesh definitely didn't mean to pass in al Allah that you need to wear tzitzis by night because it goes against the Mishnah and the Brahisa. There is no Mrs. Tzitzis by night. But according to the Ari, the Kedush of Tzitzis and the Oyrois of Tzitzis are important by night. So I draw two examples of Divir Kabbalah, which were never meant to be Allah. And I think in those cases, the Knesset Zagdoyle says, you cannot impose Kabbalah. However, as we will see just in a few minutes, many times the Zayr rules about questions that are broadly discussed in here we are. Kizve Ari Kosov al Pisoid Shieshlishka Balaila Betalas Kotin. And he brings an interesting raya from Mayat Kotten, from Menachis. Menachis Mem Gimel, Chazal say Dovah the Melech, went into the Beis HaMerchatz, and he saw that he's naked, and he said, Oili Shani Oru Mena Mitzvahs. No tzitzis, no tefillin, no mezuzah. When he remembered Bris Mila, Niskarar Odatri, So the Ariya Kodesh asked, well, by night, no tzitzis, no tefillin. So why didn't he have this same dilemma every night? So the Ariya Kodesh wants to prove he wore tzitzis by night. Interesting. Mogul Avram disagrees. Beisir Yosef writes, Loi shuman lo mishayik pedal zemi yayla. So this definitely isn't the Pesach Aloha of the Dari, but rather a Hanhag. On the other hand, in a few minutes, we will see the Zayr about Tferen Chalamoy, which is a huge halachic dilemma. So when the Knesset Zagdoyle says, we cannot impose Kabbalah, maybe he means Kabbalistic rulings that are not in the realm of Allah. But when we find halachic ruling in the Zayar or in the Ari, that has halachic significance and it could be imposed. That was my Hargosha. However, when I really learned the Knesset Zagdayla in its basic source, I saw that the Knesset Sagdoyla goes far beyond that. And what he argues is, we never could compose Kabbalah, no matter what the nature of that Kabbalistic ruling is. Kabbalah is in the realm of the Yochid. We cannot impose Kabbalah. 
And all the other rules that the Knesset Zegdala writes, quoted by the Mishnah Bruder, are voluntary. If a person wants to be Yoytzer Afiyah Mekubalim, these are the rules. Gemara and Pais come over, Yoytzer Mekubalim. Chumra, we follow Kabbalah. When there's a Machlaikas, Kabbalah Yachriya. But all that is voluntary. It's not uh, to the Beisden to decree. And now we will see there definitely are exceptions. So I would like to go over to the first source in your modern acquaintance, not mine, Simen Chofhei Beis Yosef. Do we make one bracha or two brachas on the tefillin? Chof hey. Beis Yosef. Here we are. Here we are. V'yavorech, v'yaniach antshel yad chila, I'm reading the tour. V'yavorech hasik rishon, say s'vul aniach tefillin. V'yach kach shoros, v'yavorech al mitzvah tefillin. That is many guys can ask. And that is the Rambam. So that's a Machlokes Rif on Rambam on one hand, the Rosh and the Tur on the other hand. Svarda make one bracha, Beis Yosef follows the Rambam, Ashkenazim follow the Rosh, two brachas. Ha'ogur, we just move left. Kosa v'zele shoynoi. V'ani emacha v'metzosi v'sefer azoya parshas pinchas. Ma'amed d'reb shemei chui den avorach al shneim ala bruch achas. V'zele shoynoi. Omer eb shemen, t'filin inen al moicho. V'kabel zochol v'tfilin d'daro, smolo, al libe l'kabel shomor. Ma'a zochol v'shomor v'di v'lechot nemro. So the other writes, I wonder, who could argue against Rav Shimon? And then the Bishesif writes, Eini yoidea lama tamayalze. So this is fascinating. In our halacha, the B'Shayis of Wonders, why is the Oga surprised that we don't pass in accordance to the Zaya? This is common practice. We follow the Paiskin. We don't follow the Zaya. And the reason the Besides of Paskins will make one broker is not because of the Zaya, but because the Besides of always follows the footsteps of the Rambam and the Rif. Rishoyne is Farad. So let's just bear in mind and remember this base Yosef. He's aware of the Zoya, but he writes, we paskin in accordance to the Paiskin, not necessarily in accordance to the Zoya. Now we move over to Simon Lamed Aleph and Beis Yosef. Does one put on Tfilin Chalamoyed? So we read the tour. Shabbos v'yam tevlav v'an tevelen havin. Cholish shal mo'ed yesh mistat kem bo'y. Im uzman tevelen v'menichan v'loi brocha. V'adoyni yovi arash v'yam menichan. U'mevorech aleyhem. Machlaikis rash v'an rash. What is the rationale of the machlaikis? Shabbos in yam tev. You don't put on tevelen because Shabbos in yam tev are ois. And tevelen is a ois. And if you put on Tfilin Shabbos and Yom Tov, you are belittling the Hashivas of Shabbos and Yom Tov. Shabbos and Yom Tov are an ois, and they don't need an additional ois. And the Rajman, the Rosh, 
disagree whether Chalamoid is a ois or not. And the tour brings the Machlekes. And the tour, as usually, follows in the footsteps of his great father. Let's scroll down. The Besyosef is already highlighted. so here, the reason the Beis of Paskins in accordance not to put on Tfilin is definitely because of the Zoya. So the Beis of doesn't quote the lotion of the Zoya, but the Zoya is very harsh, and the Zoya writes, Somebody puts on film, Kalamoid Chayv Misa. Let's have a look at the Shulchan Aruch. So, what do we find in Shulchan Aruch? Shabbos Viyam Tevosel Aniach Tvilim Mepnei Shemas Mamois. Ve'im Enichem Be'Mois Acher Hoyazil Zela Ois Shalem. Ve'Chalamoid Gamken Oso Laniach Tvilim Menatam Ezeh Ba'atzmoi. Oso Laniach Tvilim. Deramo. And the reason the Besides of Paskins also is the Zoya. Interesting. In the previous discussion, one brocha, two brochas, the Bishai of Paskins, according to Rambam, doesn't really base his psak on the Zaya. In this case, what about the Zaya? And the Ramon, on the other hand, says, we don't Paskin in accordance to the Zaya, only the Poiskin. I heard when I connected that you were dealing with Simon Kufna Malaf. Let's have a look at Kufna Malaf. Kufna Malaf, the discussion is, does the Euler Torah read together with the Shliach Tzibur or not? Does he read together with the Shliach Tzibur or not? Once again, this is a big, discussion in the Paiskim that is shining. Some argue, do we have Kufma Malaf? Shlomi, do you recall, do we have Kufma Malaf? We very much do. Um, so now the question is, do we have it only in the Ravs? You're looking for the Beis Yosef of the Maria Buav? Then we yeah, have, so let's go to my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's then go, go number my... six in Number six in the uh, Rav's Mar Makaymus. Yes, number five. Number five. Uh, six in the Madura comments. Number six. The Rav added one, or I don't know, Rabbeinish added one here. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Then it'll be six and seven, yeah. No, no, no we're, in, in we're in the wrong, you're on the wrong file there. Tweet to the Rav's master. The one that you said you have the second one. You're in the wrong file. My man, my is not Sula Sadaf. Right. It's a... It's a Word file, not a PDF. I have it. I have to get my computer to cooperate. Okay. Okay, so... Reb Shalom, you should have just explained about... You will explain it. Come out in a second. Here it is. We got it. Here we are. It's number number six. I think Beishaisif... The long titut of Isaiah right there in the middle. Uh, the next one, next page. There you go. Simon Kufma Malaf. Here we are. So the question is, is the Oyla Torah, does he read together with the Balkaira? 
רבנו הגודל מארי אבו רב, כוסף, שמעתי שכוסף בספר הזו שאין לי כלוס כלל, אלא איך עוד, וראוי לחוש לדבריו, אם האמת הוא כך, שאני לא ראיתי את כוסף, אלא ששמעתי. מארי אבו רב heard this as I have, but he says, I didn't see it. But if it's true, then we should adhere to the Zaya. I found it in Parshas V'yakel. V'osel mikra b'yuraisa barachad b'lchodohi v'shakken v'shamen milo mepumei. Only one person reads in the Torah and all the others are quiet and listen. K'ilu kiblen lo haishat metura d'sinai. I need to imagine we're hearing kol Hashem in Har Sinai. And the one that reads, somebody needs to stand next to him, and he is quiet. So the Zohar is very adamant, and the disease of Patsons in accordance to the Zohar, as we see in source number seven. However, the Vesyosef towards the end of that paragraph makes some sort of a compromise and he says, maybe even according to the Zayar, the Euler could read, but he needs to read quietly. And therefore the Shekhanor Paskins, Lo yikru'u shnayim, Ho Euler koira v'shliyach se v'shoysek, או שליח צבע כהן אבו אלה לא יקרא בקול רם. בכל מקום. צורך לי לקרוא סמל שליח צבע שלא יברוך על הבטולה. צורך לקרוא איס. בנחס שלא ישמיע לאזנר. ולמון דאר כמו שסורס נאמר אייט סייז, why do we need to make פשורס? three lines from the bottom. אין לא זוז מדברי הפוסקים. אף אם היו דברי הזוהר כל כמה להם. כנראלי, זה לא כבסי יוסף של כוסף, זה לא שווקין אין דברי הזויים מפני דברי הפויסקים, והוא הצלח לעשות פשורה ביניהם. So that I come as she writes, why do we need פשורס? We adhere to the פויסקים. So we already have two sources in which the בסי יוסף rules according to the זויאר, and the רמו says no. The Zohar has no halachic significance, only poisk. And that is the Mesodas of Ashkenaz. At this stage, I would like to go over, I think it's at the end of my source sheet, the Marashal and the Benish Chai. Could we scroll down? We have the Marashal source of Daf, if, uh, if that's uh, better, um, Dr. Rav. Same. Yeah. Same. Same. Okay, so leave it here, Tfig, leave it here, number 11. Source 11. <laughs> ומדור שנעלום הם ומחלו שער האויס, לא יביטו באור הזוי ולא יעידו מיצור ומבוי עוד בקו הנוסוי. אלה שכך מצאו בספר רשבי. Now, let me give you a short introduction about the Marshal. First of all, the Marshal was a real Ashkenazi Kanoi. And he always uses harsh language. That's the nature of the Marshal. There's an amazing tshuva. We're not going to have it on our screen. I'm just sharing it with you. Somebody asked the Kash and the Marshal from the Rashba. And the Rashba was 400 years before the Marshal. And the Noidi Beauty writes, I wonder, you don't know who you're dealing with. Who else? would dare to write. Rabbeinu Tam was far greater than the Rambam. Could anybody else dare to write a line like that? 
That's what the Marsha likes. Did you put them both to test? You gave them a prina? You gave the Rambam a prina, Rabbeinu Tam a prina? How do you dare to write that Rabbeinu Tam was greater than the Rambam? But that's the Marsha. That is the Marsha. So here, the Marsha writes harsh language about people that want to be the Kabbalim and they think they know what they're talking about. Da'ahuvi. Wow. He writes, if Reb Shimon himself would come to my Bismedish, I would disregard him. I wouldn't listen to him. Wow. Well, so the Marshal writes, we don't put Aunt Phil and Chalamoid. I agree with the Bis Yosef, but not because of the Zoyal, but because of the Rashbo. And we paskin like the Rashbo. The last five lines. We don't care about the Zoyal. Only Poiskin. So the Marshal coincides with the Ramah. But the Ramo was the gentle one. The Ramo would never use this language. You know, the Marshal and the Ramo were Ashkenazim, but the Marshal attacks the Ramo a lot. And the Ramo always answers the Sofa Bruro Veneimo. So the Marshal and the Ramo were two giants, contemporaries, totally different nature. The Ramo was always the gentle one. And the marshal is fire and brimstone, always. Rav Pa'olim, Rabbi Yosef Chaim in Baghdad, one of the later Sephardi giants in Kabbalah and in Allah. In the introduction to the Shara Shetuvah, Rav Pa'olim, wow, he writes very angry, angrily about the marshal. And I don't know how he dared, but let's read some of this. You know, this is just his history. I think it's important for Talmida Chachon to know our Gedolim, to know their sprach, to know their personalities, and some history. This is not really long, this but history. The Mashal thought he's dealing with a contemporary. The Mashal saw himself and he didn't see anything greater than him. How does the, the Benesh Chai dare to relate this way to the Mashal? In reality, I don't see in whatever the Mashal writes a begia in Reb Shimon Bayakuri. Not at all. I don't know why the Ben is so angry. I don't know. The Marshal wants to make a point clear. Ein alocha kedivrei azoya. Ein lano elo divrei agamora vapoisk. And that's why he writes, if Reb Shimon himself would come to the base of Medrash, we would ask him, which Reb Shimon are you? The Reb Shimon of the Mishnah? Or the Reb Shimon of the Zayar. If you are the Reb Shimon of Reb Zayar, then ain't lano el divrei So that is the Mesiris Ashkenaz. 
So this is really just a fascinating read. Beis Yosef, Paskins in accordance to the Zoya, the Mashal says, you got it right, but not because of the Zoya, because of the Rasbo and the Ben Ishchai. Now, I got before the Rav Muzan, if I can ask as a member of Muzgar, we all noticed that you pronounced it Atana Eleki, which is not the way the Elam is uh, to use this Bitui. I'll tell you, I think Atana Eleki is awful. And it's, you know, people have good intentions. You don't become an Apakoida so easy, it's quite hard. But Hatano Elokai, there is only one Elokai. Echad Yochad Emiyuchad. Elokai means that he has Elokus. So that's a wrong pronunciation. You never say Hatana Ha There is only one Eloka. And that is a Kodesh Bochu. When you say Hatana Eloki, means that he is, he is great. He has Kedusha Sashchino. So I think it's a mistake to say Ha'elokai, as most people say. And the reason they say that is because it rhymes. Atano Elokai, Reb Shimon Bar Yochai. But I think it's wrong to pronounce it Atano Elokai. It's, it's rather Atano Elokai. And it rhymes with Reb Shimon Bar Yochai. No? Isn't that the real way to pronounce his name? In any case? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh. Ashkenazim say Yehoi, but the Sephardim say Yochai. But anyway, so let's go back now to Yoradea. And this is fascinating. So so is it possible the Rav Pa'olam was just writing from a, the Sephardish tradition, didn't take the Marshal with the same uh, the Yuras are covered as, as Ashkenazim do? The Rav asked the question but didn't left it hanging. Why would the yeah. I, I, I think for some reason, listen, the Marshal always uses extreme language. And as I said, you know, he always, that is the Marshal. You know, the Marshal writes that Gedoy and Ashkenaz were far greater than all the Gedoy, the Misfad, and Abed Tam was bigger than that. But nobody else would write that. Nobody else would write that. That, that is the Marshal. But I really don't see in what the Marshal wrote to begin Reb Shimon Be'echoi. It's extreme language, but he got the Ben Ishchai infuriated. But fundamentally, Mesodes Ashkenaz and Mesodes Svarad. The Mesodes of Svarad starts with the Bes Yosef. And as we saw in today's Shia, the Bes Yosef bases many rulings on the Zayar. And in both halachas we learn today, that Amo disagrees with the Zayar. So the Mesodes of Ashkenaz is Gemara and Poiskin. There is no room for Kabbalah in a logic ruling. But the Besyosef and all Gedele Svarad following the Besyosef say there definitely is room in a logic ruling for the Zoyer and from Kabbalah. The last source in today's sheet I would go over in my source sheet I think it's eight and nine or nine and ten. And this is also. Well, before the Rav goes here today, so do we have a, a in your understanding, when uh, the Beis have decided to be Maitik? Is there, a, is there a understanding, a theory, when he decided to be Maitik, the Zara, and when not? There must be other cases of the Zara and Allah. At least 28, the entire halachic. Holding of the Zaira Kadesh or the Baisais of picked and choose what's happening here? We will see as we move forward and many other sources. I don't have a very, very clear cut explanation that covers all. You know, in the Chuva that I wrote, I wrote Chavches Makaitis, but since then it mushroomed to Lamed Gimel Makaitis. Gal Ainai. It's not something I will try to summarize today, maybe next week. But we did have some fascinating discussions today. And I would like to finish off with Yoredea because it comes with a story. 
יורד אייסם הסמכי בייס יוסף. My source sheet. Could we have it on the screen? It's coming up. Yes, number three. Uh, I think number, it's nine. Uh, yeah, it's toward the end. It's number nine. Once it's a small uh, base oh, No, yeah. the other one. We'll yeah. have the base Yosef and the dark emotion. No, no, it's in it's in the other one of three. The word the word file, not the PDF. Right. Okay, hold on. The Rav can start explaining the background. He's going to put it up in a second. Take okay. There's a machlokes Reb Yehuda and Reb Shimon and a Braise brought in Psochim Daf Chav Beis. Writes the Bais Yosef. Kosav Arashbo. Yes, my Rabbi says she Amru Shagid Osav Anon. Yes, my Rabbi says Matiri Moisay Bechein Nera Bechein Nahago Miu. The Sefer Azoya passes Vishlech Nera Shagid Osav Anon. Belachem Toiv Lezoham. So here once again the Bais Yosef doesn't. Rule, according to the Zoya, Toiv Lezor. And the Dark Moshe is perplexed. Any maven devorov. Ki shumati ki baal sefer azoyer hu stam reb shimen amuska betalmud. Shu reb shimen ba yechoi. Vo palig yemoi betalmud shalano. Reb Yehuda matir ba no. And reb Yehuda ve reb shimen alochi ki reb Yehuda. Kamo yishu kazvo pois. Ki vim ken ein rayim a sefer azoyer le inyan el chaser. כן נראה לי, וכן כוסר בסיוע יוסף בעצמו יהיה באורח חיים סמר חופי, what does he mean אורח חיים סמר חופי? that we don't pass in accordance to the Zoyar, but he doesn't quote אורח חיים למד א', אורח חיים קוף ממלך, and who is the בסיוע יוסף does pass in accordance to the Zoyar, but the cash of the dark of Moishe is huge. this is a מחלוקת של יהודה ורב שמן, אני לא חיכה עם יהודה, so what do you want to prove from the Zoyar? This is Reb Shimon. So here are the Teretz in the name of the Satmar Rebbe, the Divrei Yoyal. The Divrei Yoyal said, Reb Shimon and the Zoyal is after 13 months in the cave. Sham Lom et Sisrei Teirah. So Reb Shimon and the Zoyal has more weight than Reb Shimon and the Bryce. I wonder, I wonder, Shabbos Teflam and Gimel is the story of Reb Shimon. In the entirety of Shas Bavli Yerushalmi, the story of Reb Shimon, the Romans were after him. He fled from the Romans and he spent 13 years, 12 plus another one, in the cave with Reb Eloza Benoi. The story is told in Shabbos Teflam and Gimel. And the Gemara says, Reb Shimon before hiding in the cave, he was the son of Lord of Pinchas ben Yor. Reb Shimon asked the question, Reb Pinchas ben Yor said, 12 Teruzi. After coming out of the cave, Reb Pinchas ben Yor was the one that asked the question, and Reb Shimon responded with 24 Teruzi. So obviously, what Reb Shimon and Reb Loza did in the cave is not only learn Zoya. They learn Nigla, as obvious from the story told in Shabbos Lam Gimalam and Beis. Would it be possible to have the Tanya on the screen? Would it at all be possible? Because I didn't have it in my modern acquaintance. But anyway, I want you to check Tanya. Igeres HaKodesh, Os Chavav. An amazing Tanya. Tanya writes that Reb Shimon and Reb Loza belong in the cave went over Shisha Sidra Mishnah. There are thousands of memoriam of Reb Shimon and Shisha Sidra Mishnah. Not hundreds. Far more than a thousand. And the Tanya writes, the Zayar and the Tekunim took them two or three months. That's a shocker. I think he's exaggerating. But the Tani was a giant in Kabbalah. And he writes the Zoya, that took them two or three months, not 13 years. So anyway, I don't think 
this would explain and resolve the darker Moishas cash. What I think is the opinion of the Bis Yosef is fundamentally not only about Reb Shimon, vice versa, or the others. I think the Bis Yosef puts great emphasis on Kabbalah. So as long as the Machlaikas the Reb Yehuda and Reb Shimon is a halachic Machlaikas, halachic Reb Yehuda. But if Reb Shimon weighs in al pi that has added value. Because according to the Bishyos of Kabbalah is of extreme importance and significance. But let me make an interesting note. In Sima Samachei Yerodeya, even though in the Bishyos, if he writes Yesh Li Zohar, in the Shechanoach, he paskins, Gidar Nosha, Muter and the Shechanoach, he does not write Yesh Li Zohar. So the Bess Yosef is extremely nuanced. And in our next session, we will really try to forge some opinion. So when does the Bess Yosef follow Kabbalah all the way? When is it a recommendation? When does he ignore Kabbalah? But Gideonosh is an extremely interesting example. It's a machlaikis Rebbe Yehuda, Rebbe Shem, and Balochik Rebbe Yehuda. That's the question of the Ramah. But the Bessia Yosef writes, yes, Lezor. So my approach is, the feeling of the Bessia Yosef is not Zoyer against Poiskin. It's Kabbalah against Allah. And the Bessia Yosef's opinion is, Kabbalah has significance. So as long as the Machloik is Reb Yehuda and Reb Shimon is in Braisa, and it's a Allah HaDikah Machloik is Allah HaKir Reb Yehuda, but if Reb Shimon weighs in in Zohar or Pikabona, that's different. Yesh li Zohar. But it still doesn't change Allah. And that's why in Shulchan Aruch, he paskins, Gidon HaShemut HaBanoah, and he doesn't even write Yesh li Zohar. So this is an interesting source, Yeredeya Samachay. So today we started off with the Mishnah Brewer, with the rules, the Knesset Zekdoida, five rules. And the specific halachas we discussed, one bruch or two bruchas, Tfilin Chalamoyed, reading together with the Balkaira, and Gidanosh, four specific sources we dealt with at greater length. And the rest of the Dishmaya will be next week. Let me just share a very, very quotes of art about Lag Boima. Shulchan Aruch writes, Why is Lag Boima Yem Simcha Pasko Melamus? The plague was over. And I say, why was the plague over? It's very well known that Saul Salanta says that the 48 Kimyone Torah, Vedic above of Abbas, coincide with the 49 days of Sphira. And Rabbi Saul demanded from his Talmud the each and every day to work on one of the Kimyone Torah. The Chidu Sharim said the same before him. And I think Rabbi Kiva knew the same side, and his Talmudim did the same. So if you count Kinyone Torah from number one, number 32 is Oye Vesabriyos. 32nd day of Svira, Talmidim Rabbi Kiva invested energy and they worked on Ava Sabriyos. Lama Gimel Boima, the plague was over. Loi Nago Kovay but that was the tikkun. Number 32 in the list of Kinyonet Torah is Ahav Sabrius. Day number 33, the plague was finally over. So this chus of the Tanah will akira b'shimah b'yechoi.
יעמד לא נבל הכל ישרור, כפי שתשאר בסייל וסטרס. אני רוצה לתת את זה בפרטוניטי, אני פגעת את זה עד הבגינג הזה שיהיה טוב עם מנחם, אור דיר פרנד, ופסח לידו רייך על הפסינג. of uh, his mother-in-law, mother Schwieger. Of his mother-in-law. She should be a male associate of the entire family. And we should only share the status. Alistair Gamad Boimah. Yes, I'm going to go to the 